Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Uh, I would like to continue talking about uh, three phase um, uh, alternating current and solve a very simple problem. The problem has actually practical implementation and practical uh, need uh, because sometimes in our households we can use the electricity of uh, let's say 120 volts and sometimes 220 certain um, appliances like uh, electric stove for instance or powerful air conditioner require 220 volts um, to reduce because they consume a lot of energy so if you increase the uh, voltage you can decrease proportionally decrease the amperage so to prevent certain accidents whatever in any case we do need both question is how it's done. Well, you call an electrician, an electrician probably does whatever is necessary with your connections, and here is your outlet with 220. So how is it done? Well, I will answer this question after I will um, finish talking about this little problem. So here is the problem. Um, let's say you have three-phase generator. Well, it has uh, four different wires. Uh, zero, which is basically like ground. It has uh, phase number one, which is some maximum times sine of omega t. You have phase two, which is shifted by 120 degrees by 2 pi over 3 relative to And you have a phase three, which is shifted by yet another 120 degree, which is, if you wish, it's four pi over three, or the same thing as minus two pi over three, because two pi is uh, a period of function sign. So that's more convenient to do this. So my question is, we do know these voltages relative to um, to the ground, to the zero. Okay. My question is, what is the difference in voltage between pair of phases? All right. Well, the only thing is you can calculate it very simply. Well, here it is. If, if this is, let's say, x, y, z, and this is, let's say, a, you have a, you have x minus a, you have y minus a, and you have z minus a. These are differences. If you need x minus y, this is x minus a minus y minus a, right? So by subtracting one from another, so to find the difference between these two, we can take the difference between these two, which is difference between this and this and this and this. Right? So let's just do the calculations. And this is just a simple trigonometry. And that's why on this website I have a course which is called Mass for Teens, which is prerequisite for this one, and I do recommend you to take it. Um, okay, so let's do, let's say, x minus y. So this is e12 as a function of time. So E is a peak uh, voltage. Now, if you remember, effective voltage is square root of 2 less than the peak voltage. We did it in some other lecture. OK. So the difference between this and this. All right. So this is E sine of uh, omega t minus E sine omega t plus 2 pi over 3. It's more convenient for me to do it differently. It's um, sine, let's substitute phi is equal omega t plus pi over 3. Then omega t would be phi minus pi over 3 minus e obviously goes uh, a factor out sine of 
phi plus pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is phi plus pi over 3, and plane omega t is just phi minus pi. Why do I need it? Well, you will see that if I will open all these parentheses and use the function uh, of sine of uh, difference or sum of two angles, you will see how things basically just reduce, cancel each other, equals two. So E, okay, sine phi cosine pi over three minus cosine phi sine pi over three, right? That's this one. Minus, the, this is the sum of two angles. Well, you remember, I will, well, I, let me remind, sine alpha minus beta is equal to sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. And if this is plus, then this is plus. Well, again, go to trigonometry. So minus sum, uh, sine of sum of this angle. So it's sine phi cosine phi naught pi divided by 3 and minus again because this is minus. So And this is sum of two angles. So it's plus and plus. So minus and minus. Uh, cosine phi sine pi over 3. What happens here? That's what happens. So it's minus i e cosine phi sine pi over three equals. Uh, okay, now it's minus e cosine omega t plus pi over three. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be 2, right? It's 1 and 2, so it's 2 cosine. Now, what is the sine of pi over 3? Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Sine is square root of 3 divided by 2, right? So it's 2 here. Square root of 3 divided by 2 is equal to minus square root of 3 e cosine. Oh, sorry. So what do we have here? That's what's very important. This is what's very important. These guys all are sinusoidal. Now, it doesn't really matter whether it's plus 2 pi over 3 minus. It's just a shift in time. But the behavior is sinusoidal, with E being the peak. Here, we have also sinusoidal. Um, oscillation because cosine and sine are basically the same graphs again shifted in time by uh, pi over 2. So basically it's also sinusoidal but what's important is the peak voltage is not just E it's but in, in magnitude it goes from E to minus E to I mean E to minus E but this goes from square root of 3 times E so it's by square root of 3 greater. The difference in voltage between these two guys at any moment is greater, the peak voltage is greater by square root of 3, which means that effective voltage, which is square root of 2 less than the peak, is also square root of 3 greater between two phases. Now, as an example, let's just take to other phases, let's say phase 2 and phase 3. It will be the same. So phase 2 and 3 would be E23 of T difference between this and this. So again, it's E times sine of sum, which is sine of omega t 
cosine 2 pi over 3 plus cosine omega t sine 2 pi over 3 minus this one minus so this is sign of difference between angles so it's cosine 2 pi over 3 minus but this is minus here so it's plus cosine omega t sine 2 pi over 3 so what do we have here we cancel this and we have 2 cosine omega t times sine of 2 pi over 3 what is sine of 2 pi over 3 uh, it's uh, 2 pi over 3 is 120 degree and sine is an opposite angle which is one half is it one half sine of 2 pi over 3 sine is no that's 120 degrees sorry it's not correct it's this way it's 90 plus 30 here so sine is square root of 3 over 2 so this is square root of 3 over 2 and this is 1 half minus 1 half Okay, so what we have here, again, square root of 3, by the way, I forgot e, obviously, times e times cosine omega t. So what we have here, exactly the same thing as before. The peak voltage is 100 and, uh, square root of uh, 3 um, greater than the peak voltage of uh, the phase 2 relative to 0. So from 2 to 3 is square root of 3 greater the peak voltage from 1 to 2 and if you calculate the same thing from 1 to 3 it will be the same thing well very quickly let me just do it. e from 3 to 1 so from 1 to 2 from 2 to 3 from 3 to 1 okay so it's e times um, sine of difference which is uh -huh, okay here it's also convenient to do this phi is equal to omega t minus pi over 3 and I have sine of um, phi minus pi over 3 right phi is omega t uh, omega t minus pi over 3 and another pi over 3 that would be this one uh, minus sine of phi plus pi over 3 because if I will add pi over 3 I will have omega t here that's what I have equals to equals sine all right e obviously again I forget e Uh, sine phi uh, cosine pi over 3 minus cosine phi sine pi over 3 minus this is sine of sum of two angles so it's minus and minus sinus phi cosine pi over 3 minus cosine phi sine pi over 3 so what do we have cancelling sine cosine minus sine cosine so it's equal to 2 e uh, minus minus and minus cosine phi and sine pi over 3 which is square root of 3 divided by 2 so we have the same thing again square root of 3 greater so as you see 
the difference in voltage between two phases is by square root of 3 greater than the difference between the phase and the zero. So, if you are in a house which needs both voltages, let's say 120 and 220, 127 actually and 220, what you do is you have, you need to have at least three wires, one zero and any two out of three phases. And that's how this distribution actually is happening. So the three phases and zero obviously go to well some kind of a district, let's say a building. A big building gets three phases and then every apartment has zero and two out of three phases distributed evenly more or less. Having let's say this in your apartment for a regular like regular lamp or something like this you can use two wires between uh, two wires uh, zero and and one of the phases so you have certain number of outlets which have two wires one of them is zero another is a phase and in some cases if you have something like an electric stove or refrigerator um, well some ref refrigerator different refrigerators um, uh, on the market then uh, you will have an outlet two wires of which are actually two different phases and in one particular case it was really a curious thing I needed 220 in one particular place I didn't have it I didn't have any outlet I had uh, uh, for 220 but I have one outlet uh, from uh, phase 1 and 0 which was 120 and then another outlet from 2 to 0 so what I did is I took one phase from one outlet and another from one from another outlet and the difference between them was 220 don't do it at home. Um, so, in any case, as you see, my purpose was to basically convey to you that the difference in voltage between two phases is square root of 3 greater in peak and in effective voltage than the difference between any phase and zero. Now, if you will open some textbooks, more or less technical textbooks, they will tell you that the voltage between two phases is 1.73 greater than the voltage between phase and, and, and the zero. But usually they don't have any explanation. Explanation is very simple. It's plain trigonometry. That's where the square root of 3 is. And square root of 3 is 1.73, etc. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unisor.com. Uh, the calculations are all there, obviously. Uh, do it again yourself. It's a you know good exercise in trigonometry. And again, let me just emphasize it again. You do need math to study physics seriously. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.